Finally, Fox has come out with a good dating show. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swell Entertainment. And today we are talking about the new-ish, it's a reboot because everything's a reboot these days, but I'll take what I can get sometimes. The new dating show from Fox, Joe Millionaire, For Richer or Poorer. Listen, I have talked about a different dating show from Fox previously. In 2020, I talked about their show, Labor of Love, which I still think was unhinged. I think that it was so weirdly uncomfortable. I, I, I've made two videos on it, go watch. I, I reviewed like the first episode and the premise and then the final episodes. I watched the whole rest of the season, did a whole thing, go watch that. As far as I can tell, that show is not coming back. It was not picked up. Labor of Love was uh, uncomfortable in a way that it had the lead who was uh, a woman and she was trying to find someone to give her a child, be the father of her child. The dates reflected that. Sometimes they were romantic dates and other times it was like, okay, we're having a kid's birthday party. We're checking your sperm count. Oh yeah, the birthing simulations. There was a lot of fun things like that. You know, nothing that's really conducive to a romantic environment, but considering the fact that it was meet someone and then three weeks later, you may be down to have a kid with them, I think it was a good thing that things didn't work out. And I think she ended up going it alone. Christy, I believe is her name. Last I heard from her, last I checked on her, she was uh, going the road alone and going into IVF and doing all of that, I believe, which was all publicly documented on her Instagram. So it wasn't like I'm divulging private information about her or anything like that. But that was the last show from Fox that I saw, okay? And I was like, you know what? I want to, I need a new show. I need something unhinged. I need something good. The Bachelor just isn't doing it for me anymore. It really isn't. They need to get better at screening the girls and screening the guys, frankly, for The Bachelor. I think the problem with The Bachelor now is because they know that so many people know like, oh, I can become an influencer if I go on The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, that they then either try to get as many drama people as they can to make the show interesting and keep their ratings up, or they go too far the other direction and they get so many people who are desperate to get married and have children and babies tomorrow. That's where Joe Millionaire is filling a void for me because it's both of those things combined with the added bonus that one of the dudes is a millionaire. The thing about Joe Millionaire is like I said, it's a reboot. So the original Joe Millionaire aired in 2003, also from Fox. The premise of the show originally was that the women were told that this guy was a millionaire but he wasn't. And uh, the second season, they only did two seasons. It was the next Joe Millionaire, I think was the second season because the show had gotten so popular in the first season and a desperate attempt to recreate that initial drama of their experiment. That's how I think the stunt of the original. They had a guy who I think made a total of $6,000 the previous year. And they got a bunch of English speaking European women to come and participate in the show. Sounds like a lot of the guys on 90 Day Fiance, but that's just me. So the show got canceled, wasn't great, but obviously the show's whole premise was like, let's lie to women and have them fight to be with someone. And then they find out that the guy doesn't have money. And then do you actually still want to be with him or are you just with him for the money? And it sounds like at the end, the girl and him decided to stay together and they split the $1 million prize money, which they still do that <laughs> or they used to do that. I don't think a lot of shows do $1 million anymore. That's insane. They split the money and then he made a total of like, I think 2 million after everything with the appearances and all of that. But obviously the show kind of has been like a butt of a joke where people are like, this is the thing that happened. Oh my God, this is awful. Like it's one of those things with the reality dating shows. This show is different, okay? It's so much better. I, I know someone's gonna be like, uh, it's still the same thing. We're lying to women. No, because the women know. The way Joe Millionaire, for richer or poorer, I'm just gonna call it Joe Millionaire. I'm not gonna keep saying the full title because that's insane. The way that Joe Millionaire runs now is they got 18 women, which smart, starting with less than 30, smart. You get connected to the women way earlier for the audience perspective. I am, okay. Let me explain where I'm coming at this show from. I grew up watching random dating shows. I have always been a bachelor girl. There's a couple of years here and there where I kind of drift away from it, okay? Because I stopped believing in love. But there are times where I come back to these shows, okay? I just think they're, they're very fun. I like reality TV dating shows, mainly because it's not my life. I am applying for a bunch of shows though <laughs> for this year. 
But that's a whole other thing. That's a different potential video we shall see, but I will be applying to a bunch of dating shows this year. The Bachelor is one that I always liked growing up. There's been a bunch of other random shows that would come for like a year or two and then disappear. There was Dating in the Dark, just kind of like Love is Blind, but different. Literally, they're just in the dark, but they're in the same room. That show was fine as hell. It'd be, people are wild and they, they don't know what's going on around them. God, there was another show. I've talked about it previously. I think it was nerds and hotties or models or something. And it was like a bunch of nerdy people and then a bunch of really hot people. And they just kind of put them all together. It was very fun, which I don't think was meant to be a dating show. I just think that was a show. I've spoken about this previously. Someone sent me the link. I forgot. But there was this other show that I was obsessed with. I'm fairly there was only one season, but it was three moms. And then they had all the women. And then they would pick the women for their sons to date. Insane. I'm obsessed, but that's where I'm coming from for this video. I'm coming at this show as someone who loves unhinged dating shows. I want it. I want entertainment. If they find love, good for them. But mainly I want to be entertained because that's what reality TV is. It's for the audience. <laughs> so that's where I'm coming at for this show. But let me tell you the premise of Joe Millionaire today. So Joe Millionaire, now we have two guys. We have Kurt and we have Steven. Steven has money. Kurt. Not so much. They both own their own businesses, but one's a family business that's been going on for years. And the other one started his business about 18 months ago. One is a net worth of 10 million, the other does not. <laughs> it's so good. The women know, and they announced in night one, like, oh, here's one guy and here's another. There's two men here. Right off the bat, drama, then that's built in. You got two dudes, two argue, eh, they're, they're, they're getting along really well, but you know that's, Based on the previews, we know that's not gonna last, but I mean, they're getting along pretty well. You know, they're technically in competition, but they seem to be getting along fairly well, which is good. They're complimenting types of alpha male, which is entertaining as hell. The women all know there's two men and they know that one of them is a millionaire and one of them is not. They know that one of them has a net worth of $10 million. They know that. The women are told that night one by the butler. God, what's the butler's name? I'm pulling up his name. Butler runs this show. He's full of sass. I adore him. What's his name? Hold on. No, I want the butler's name. Give me the butler's name. Okay, his name is Martin. His name is Martin Andrew. He's also the show's host. And this is a change from the original Joe Millionaire because they had a butler-like character, but he was not the host. And so the fact that they kind of knew like, okay, this is clearly like the way to go is have the butler also be the host. And he's also like really hands-on with the guys too. It's not just like, let me, let me talk to you about which women to choose. Like, it's not like that. It's not very Chris Harrison of him. It's very like, you two need to know how to dance if you're going to do this. So like, we're going to fucking teach you how to dance. It's pretty good. I, it's wonderful. So I started watching Joe Millionaire because I previously had COVID. Yay. Spent a lot of time on the couch and they were putting the new episodes onto Hulu the following day or two later. It was fantastic. The first episode is about an hour and a half, but with commercials, it's about two hours. Then you have the second episode, which just aired, watch that. So at the time of me recording this, only two episodes have come out. That's all I've watched. Keep that in mind in case someone's like, but this happened, I haven't seen it yet. This show is great because it seems like the first episode where like the women are coming in, they're all done to the nine. Some of them are already influencers. Great thing that I like about these women. I know it's just what the, the producers are asking them, but they're being very honest for the most part that we're seeing. I'm assuming that the producers are asking how important is money to you in a relationship or things like that. But the women seem to be genuinely answering the questions rather than, oh, it's not important. I just want to find love. Like they're not doing that. It's great. It's very mask off. It's wonderful. So some of the women are blatantly like, oh yeah, no, I, I only date rich men. I would never not date someone who didn't have money. Some women say that money is important because of X reason. Like a lot of women say like, I run a business. I don't want to be taking care of you. Caroline is the one who's definitely a front runner. She actually commented on my TikTok <laughs> when I talked about the show and she just said, glad you're watching the show or glad you're liking the show or whatever, which I thought was funny. I don't think she actually said that money's important but she did say that her priority is her son. She has a son. She's previously divorced. She's a kid with another man. We'll talk about that in a second because I have opinions on Kurt's reaction to that. Money's important in that her focus is her son basically. And so it's kind of like that same thing where I don't want to take care of you. And I think that that's mainly the thing that seems to be going on here. Other women, it's like, oh, I make a lot of money, so I need someone who's confident in themselves. So them having money is kind of important. You can have your own opinions on people wanting money in a relationship. You feel free to comment down below what your opinions on that are. 
I'm just sharing the ones of this show and why I think that this is a good thing that they are being upfront about money. It's the quiet part out loud. It's, money is a very weird topic in this country. Having it, wanting it, previously having it and then losing it. It's something that's kind of like still weird to talk about. I think that we're seeing a change now where everyone's like grind culture, hustle. If I'm not making millions, I'm making nothing like that type of thing. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I also do think it's interesting in this regard with this show because I, I'm a child of divorce. There's a lot of reasons my parents divorced, but a good portion of it had to do with money, okay? So I think that at least being upfront about your opinions and expectations and beliefs around money early on in a relationship is probably a good thing. Let's be clear, the infidelities didn't help <laughs> and the substance abuse issues. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in therapy, I can laugh about it now, but still you have the women who are very upfront about their opinions of money and kind of what they want from a relationship. And it is important or it isn't important or whatever, you know, they're very upfront. Whereas with The Bachelor, because of the connotations of the history of the opinions of The Bachelor, it's harder for the contestants to be honest about their feelings about the show and about what they want from a relationship or from a relationship with The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Whereas with like the, I guess the quiet part that no one really says out loud with The Bachelor is the influencer side of things, the fame side of things, the potential to be The Bachelor or The Bachelorette if you get far enough, you know, that's the potential there. But with this show, the potential is, yeah, I kind of want to be with someone who has money. But that's why I find the show interesting. Okay, let's get into night one. They introduce the two guys, guys come out, introduce themselves. And in the audience, in the crowd of women, one of them says, I know that guy. I know him. Steven, who is the millionaire, knows her. They matched on Hinge and then followed each other on Instagram. He apparently very much publicizes his lifestyle. And again, he has money. She is aware of how much land he has. Kurt's in contracting, Steven is in farming, ranching, that type of thing. He's the one with the money. He has a lot of land, he has a helicopter, like there's a lot. So she knows that. He's like, hang on, I gotta talk to you. Pulls Martin aside, we've got a problem. Goes to Martin, explains the situation. Martin's like, this could ruin everything. Because obviously the experiment, as they keep calling it, is the women don't know which one's rich and who's not, and they kind of have to get to know the men. Ideally, they don't figure it out. That's kind of just in the back of their mind. And I do think it kind of adds like a fun little mystery element. Someone's gonna be like, this is so wrong. I think it's fun because the women are genuinely having to think about which one of them is money and which one doesn't based on how they act, how they carry themselves, how they handle various situations. We'll talk more about some of the dates in a minute. And also between the first episode and the second episode, some of the women have changed their opinions on who they think has money, which I think is, Fascinating, oh God, I'm sorry, this is great. This is great TV. Oh, I need to calm down. Martin is like, she needs to leave. She can't stay here, we gotta get rid of her. I don't even remember what her name was. She didn't say he's super loaded. She didn't do that. She's just like, I know him. We follow each other on Instagram. Like we, we matched on Hinge. First they have a producer walk in and they showed this and it's like, listen, you need to tell me what the deal is. Like you need to tell me what you know. Like that's just what needs to happen. It's pretty great. And she's just like, okay, yeah, no, I know him. Yeah, I know him, whatever. Martin's like, we have to have a conversation. And Kurt's just like, oh, this is awkward. Night one and he has to send someone home. Ooh. It's <laughs> pulls her aside and is like, he basically just has to tell her like, I was hoping to fall for someone completely organically. And she's like, I think you're cheating yourself by not getting, being able to get to know me or whatever. Anyway, send her home, night one, just gone, done, great. I love that. They should be able to do that more. Narrow it down, like immediately. Not just with that, like, oh, she knows me, goodbye. Obviously that didn't work because of the premise of the show. They couldn't have someone who knew one of the men. Just would not work out. But I think in any dating show, they should just be able to be like, I, I would not be interested in these people because of X, Y, and Z. Like that, that should just be allowed to happen. Narrow it down right away. And then that way, no one has to go home for like two weeks. You get time to meet more of the people. Think that's great. Think that'd be good. More of that. Night one, they kind of end, they just introduce the premise and then that's it. No more cocktail time. I don't even think the men went down and mingled with the women. I don't think that happened night one because that, that like threw everyone off. Clearly they were like, let's go and read background check of all these women before we move forward. So then they did like a group garden party date type of thing. And right away, Caroline and Kurt 
there is a connection. Kurt is into Caroline right away. Caroline is the single mom, like I told you. There was a really good moment. He is talking with like a group of women and then she comes and joins the group and he pauses and just goes, hello. <laughs> Like he, he got distracted by Eric, it was good. I liked it, I was fun. I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is good. And then Steven's kind of like trying to struggle to maintain like, they're both trying to hide certain elements of who they are because it would give away whether or not they have money, basically. So Steven specifically has to do this less so than Kurt. Steven specifically has to kind of be like, oh, I can't talk about how I like to take my helicopter out and go look over the fields. I can't talk about that. I can't talk about how I like to go and ride around the man-made lake that I made on my land. <laughs> like he can't do that. But then there's certain elements that like Kurt has that Steven doesn't have. At the end of the day, Steven is still fairly young and it's still like a family business and stuff. He's working. So he's not traveling as much as say Kurt has in his life. Like Kurt's traveled, Steven is not. And so that's something that a lot of the women kind of latch on to like, oh, Kurt travels, he must be the millionaire. It's interesting to see people's different perspectives of wealth kind of placed onto the show. It's, it's, I find it fascinating. That's just me. First couple of connections, just kind of like the group, like it's very hard to make like the straight, legitimate one-on-one -on -one connection when there's just hordes of women surrounding two dudes. They kind of were like, okay, this is the one I think has money. This is the one this. One of the girls kind of picks up what Steven does. And it's like, oh yeah, no, my stepdad's a rancher and owns all this stuff or whatever. It hints that she knows that he would be the one with money because she would know how much money is in that type of, work. It's not really brushed on, like she doesn't seem to really get it. It doesn't even seem like she knew what she was saying, but it like stresses Steven out for a second. Next day, two group dates. No one-on-ones yet, just two group dates. They have a bunch of boxes, black boxes, and the women have to go and pick a box. And once they get the box, inside is either heels or cowboy boots. Because the way that this show works, the group dates go, is there's a highfalutin date and then an everyday ordinary Joe type of date. So the first dates are a cotillion, fancy dinner, dancing, ball gowns, heels, dressed to the nines. And then there's going to like a cowboy bar and line dancing and drinking shots. This is great television. The women get split up. They don't get to switch. That's where they're going. Okay, they don't know which guy's going on which date. They just have to get dressed up and go. So the, the women go into the cowboy bar or whatever, all wearing flannels. All of the cotillion women, they were all given dresses to wear. And two of the women end up wearing the same dress. They, that was not the original plan. One of the women did not like her dress, which I liked it. I thought it was nice. The color stood out. I don't know why she didn't wear it. She then was like, I need a different dress. There was a couple of spares. So she picked a dress and it was a beautiful dress. The problem is, is that Suzanne had the same dress. Did not want to switch. Asked Rachel to switch. She said no. So they end up wearing the same dress to the cotillion. Already a fun time. So then what ends up happening is Kurt ends up going to the cotillion date and Steven ends up going to the bar date. Kurt goes, he's not really happy about it. He's not really interested in that type of thing. Kurt right away is like, I'm hoping Caroline is on this date. She's not, she went to the bar. So right away, you gotta talk to the other women. Right away, Suzanne is like, the good thing is, is that guys never notice what a woman is wearing. That's the good thing. And you know a producer told him to comment on it because the first thing he says is, you two are wearing the same dress. It's not like a, oh, wow. It's not like that. It's not like I got you. It's just like, you two are wearing the same dress. Like it's a fact. And I'm like, a producer told you to say that, huh? Blink twice, Kurt. But then also Sarah, Sarah is an influencer, influencer model. I think she's the youngest, she's 22. She's not wearing the same type of gown that they are. I think she's wearing her own dress and I'm surprised they let her do that. But also some of the other women have their own dresses. So I don't know why they just were all like, Oh yes, the cotillion gown. So what ends up happening at the cotillion date is that Rachel gets a little too drunk because she's not comfortable with Kurt speaking to other women and dancing with other women and having fun with other women. But he's like, he's trying to have fun, but he's clearly just like not really into the whole cotillion element of it. And he's also not into the fact that Caroline's not there. He's trying to like have little connections and he does end up having connections with one of the women, but Rachel gets a little too drunk, storms off and is like complaining to a producer. It's all on camera, of course, and is like upset. The other women are like, okay, is she gonna leave? What's going on? She comes back down. Apparently it's no problem whatsoever. Calla was someone who Kurt got along really well with on the date, like was like, oh wow, she's like surprising me. This is nice. So there was a whole issue. And then at one point, I guess Sarah was like glaring at Calla and Calla was like, do you have a problem with me? 
What's the deal? So they like cat fight ensues and everyone just leaves. Like Kurt's like, okay, I think the night's over. Like we're done. Gives everyone a hug goodbye. The end. He wasn't into it anyway. He was looking for a reason. He was like, oh, they're fighting. Great. Let's go. He was done. He was over it. And then you have Steven who's having a blast, a blast at the bar. They're doing shots. Everyone's getting drunk. They're all dancing. They're talking. One of the women gets on the bar at one point and just like starts dancing on him. She's like, you have to make an impression. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, do it. Why not? This is great. And then there's a couple little one-on-one -on -one times. At one point, Caroline pulls him aside and shares about her son because they didn't know at the time. She shares that she's divorced and they're having what looks like a very intimate conversation. One of the other women comes up and interrupts and is like, when am I going to get my time? Stealing away on any dating show, there is an art to it. Sometimes being a bitch about it is the calculated move you need to make. Sometimes you just can't be. Sometimes you have to be a bitch. Sometimes you have to be, okay? You have to disrupt the flow. If you see someone that's making a bit too much of a connection, kind of got to be a bitch because it'll upset her. And you know, he's going to be like, what's this? You, there's a way to do it. Sometimes you can't be the bitch though. You can't just force your way in there. Cause then things like this happen where Steven is like, I thought it was clear we were having a very serious conversation. And I was a little upset that she would barge in on that. You gotta pick your timing. You gotta time it better. I think with that situation, I would've just been like, hi, like I don't wanna interrupt, but like I would really like a time with you. When you're done, if you could come find me, like I would really appreciate it. I would really like to talk with you. Something like that, I think is the way to go with that. The moment's clearly broken. She like wouldn't walk away. So goes off. Anyway, I'm fairly certain she's one of the women who ends up leaving that week. Cause he was just so turned off by that. One of the other women that he speaks to, Steven does, she was against moving and was kind of like, you wouldn't like, would you ever leave where you're from? Would you ever leave your home? Would you ever do that? And he was just not up for debate or like not interested in it. That, and then also one of the women was like very much not wanting to compromise of when she wanted to have kids. So that was like also out the window, it seemed. They had those dates. And then after that, they was like, let's go back to the house. They go and do a pool party, stripped down in their flannels and just get in the pool. Steven's having a blast. Kurt was bored as out of his mind and then was dealing with cat fights. So then after that, it's like the next day, the guys go by, they bring them cookies, very smart, cause they're all in the same like facility. They're just a different portions of the facility, the guys and then the women. So the guys are like, let's just bring them cookies. Let's do that, let's have an in. So brings cookies and cause Kurt wanted to speak to Caroline before, you know, the elimination and all of that. And you know, the guys, they just kind of wanted to talk with some of the women a little bit more. Pulls her aside, she tells him about her kid and her ex-husband and Kurt right away, has an issue, not with the child, or at least that's what he's telling us. He's saying he doesn't have an issue with the kid, doesn't have a problem. He has a problem with the ex-husband. He's like, cause that's the rest of my life is now we're gonna have to deal with this co-parenting situation. I think it's normal to have reservations about that type of thing. I think it's fine to have a hard line of like, look, I don't want to be with someone who has kids. That's fine. I don't know. Maybe it's cause the co man, the co-parenting thing kind of, like the ex-husband I think is one. If it was just like an ex-husband, maybe that'd be something else. An ex is one thing. Someone who you're actively co-parenting with, I think is something else. So on one hand, I'm kind of like, it's just kind of like a very hard stop for him in the, in the moment, it seems like, where he's just like, oh no, there's always a downside. She, she would be perfect if it weren't for her ex-husband having a life prior to me. Like that's what it seems like at first. But the more I think about it, I'm like, yeah, it's understandable to have reservations about that type of thing. And then he previously says like, oh, previously that's a hard stop for me. And I know a lot of people who would not be with someone who had a kid or someone who was divorced and was co-parenting and things like that. And I think that that's everyone's personal preference, you know? So originally I was like, hey, fuck you, Kurt. I take it back. I understand a little bit more. It all depends how you play it out though. And I do think that in the second episode, he explains himself better where he's like, that's now the rest of my life. He explains it better to Caroline on their one-on-one. -on -one. He explains it better, the situation. Anyway, two women go home because the guys talk about this. They have to decide on who's going. I think Kurt didn't send anyone home because it was kind of like, I didn't even get a sense of like which of these women I would like. So I probably would just send all of them home because that was chaotic as hell. Although we did speak very highly of Kala, but I do think that like Steven definitely had like, he got the ick from those two women specifically, sent them home. Next episode's only an hour, much less. Um... <laughs> they had the girls dig for gold, hand for gold. They were being gold diggers to get a date with the guys. 
That's fun. I like that. Okay. <laughs> I like that some of the women were just like, okay, I'm just gonna start digging through this and sifting through handfuls. Fuck the pan. <laughs> Caroline won. She had the most because what they did is they had all the women make their little piles and then they waited and whoever had panned the most gold got to go on one-on-one -on -one dates with the guys. Whoever went first got to choose who she went on the date with and then whoever got second got to go with the left leftover. The, le the other guy. <laughs> leftover sounds bad. The other guy. Caroline was like, I'm just being strategic. They don't show her pile growing and uh, God, who was it who had the biggest pile? Yeah, I'm fairly certain it's Jenny. Okay, so Jenny was the one who got the other date. Jenny was in the front, it seemed from while they were panning. And then suddenly Caroline has the most. I call producer shenanigans because they don't read out the weights as they're weighing it. They just wrote it down. Calling bullshit. I don't think Caroline had the most, but I think they wanted to get Caroline and Kurt on a date. So they had Caroline go first because they knew she would choose Kurt. That's what ends up happening. Caroline goes on a date with Kurt. Jenny goes on a date with Steven, okay? And Caroline had already started getting dressed so she could choose the, the regular date or the highfalutin date. I like saying highfalutin. Hoity-toity, the hoity-toity date, okay? So she was already getting ready for an every a regular date. So they end up going to like a bowling alley. Jenny and Steven ended up going to like a offer house and having like a fancy dinner and getting all dressed up. Kind of fun. It was very intimate and sweet. Kurt and Caroline clearly already had her chemistry, getting along, and she tells him, I want you to be sure when you choose me because I know how you feel about me. Bold, but I like it. And she's like, I would like for you to date the other women. Dangerous tactic, Caroline, dangerous. She, I want you to be sure about me. So go ahead and ignore me for a little bit so you can date the other women. That's what that actually is doing. So, but he's interested. He's like, okay, sure, whatever you say. They kiss a lot. And then we go to, God, Jenny and Steven had a very nice date. She straight up says like, I do think that Kurt is the one with money. And Steven is like, it feels good to know that she's just enjoying the state with me without money being a factor. You know, like she, she is having a good time and seems to like me and it has nothing to do with my wealth, which I thought was a good moment. And she seemed very sincere. Like, I truly don't think that you're the one with money, but like, I thought it was a nice moment. And she shares something insane. Apparently, this is a very serious topic. So people be aware. I'm just like, I was just caught. I, like, I had to rewind and make sure I heard her right. She is a victim of sex trafficking. And now what she does is she wants to prevent this from happening to other people. High five, you're a badass, okay? Holy, I was not prepared, but I just was like, did she say that? I rewind, I reround re it. And I was like, oh, she did say that, holy crap. I think they cut it down because I'm assuming Steven had a better reaction. He didn't have a bad reaction. It just seemed very minor to what was being said to him. I don't think there's a great way to react to that. I think there's just kind of like a, okay, he did, she did say, I, this is like, it's one of the reasons I don't kiss on a first date and X, Y, and Z and all this stuff. So they don't kiss. And then she's kind of like kicking herself. It's like, why did I tell him that? And it's like, well, cause you obviously felt the need to, you know? And I think that that's good. It's good to stick to your guns. And it's like, yeah, in normal day-to-day -day life, you probably wouldn't kiss someone on the first date. That's fine. Share that with this guy. So it's not like, but because I'm here, let's make out, you know, like, no, that's not something that you would do. And that's fine. Oh, they did have a surprise birthday for Steven because it was Steven's birthday. So the girls did a ding dong ditch and invited the guys to their place. And they did like a full little, they did dare or dare. So not truth or dare. They did dare or dare with like spin the bottle. Steven got a lap dance. They did push up shirtless. There was dancing on the tables. There was ballerina dancing. It was fun. It was cute. I liked it. I like little things like that in these shows, like little things where it's like, was a producer like, you guys should do this. Yeah. Yes, probably, but like it seemed more organic and I like that. Fake it, I don't care, who, who cares? Then we had the elimination ceremony. What I like about these elimination ceremonies, no one's dressed up, they're just wearing what they're wearing. And then they just kind of were like, okay, let's just go on the patio. So they just have all the women sit around on the patio. They're not standing on podiums for two hours, sometimes seven hours, like on The Bachelor. They'll start at like 1 a.m. and go until the sun goes up sometimes, those things. They'll go all night because the guys forget their names. So do the women, so they have to go in. Memorize two or three, come back out, reset. Okay, two more roses. I forgot two more names, next. I think the only one who went home was, gosh, what's her name? Doris. Doris went home and she just didn't make any connections. She's stunning, but she just didn't seem, she wasn't like being as out there as she probably could be, didn't work out. That's the end of Joe Millionaire for now. I'm 
flipping. It's been a while since I've been this into a show, okay, like this. The Bachelor, I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm watching, you know, but like I'm genuinely into this premise and how this is going to play out. Because eventually, at a certain point, it's going to kick in where these women are going to start feeling like they're being lied to by the men that they get closer to. Because eventually, some of them are kind of figuring out like, oh, I, I like this one. This is who I'm after. And Caroline's at that point with Kurt. The other women are kind of like, I like him, but I'm also open to something else with Kurt or Steven or whatever, you know? We also know that one of the women is going to be very interested in one of the camera people. They bleeped it, but I know she probably says, I want to fuck the shit out of him. I'm assuming is what she said. There's another moment with Rachel again, where it looks like she just gets really upset. Like they're showing us the camera people. That's how upset they're not even trying to hide the people with the cameras. That's how, that's how you know the good stuff's going down where you see the, the fourth wall is being broken. Okay. I'm excited. I I'm excited. Do I think any of these women are here for the right reasons? I think it's a show. I think it's a show. I think that if you find someone on one of these shows, good for you. But I also think you signed up for a TV show. That's my view of these shows. I actually don't hate either of these men. Usually with The Bachelor, specifically The Bachelor, I'm usually like, this is dude, this dude's a terrible person. And so it's interesting to see that I don't actually strongly dislike either of these men. And I, I kind of want to see how, because right now they're bros. Right now they're bros. I want to see when that starts clashing, when the women start dwindling down and they start picking their men and you know there's going to be some overlap. I'm excited for that. Good job, Fox. You did good. I'm very intrigued and very interested in this show. And that's really going to be it. Have you watched Joe Millionaire for richer or poorer? Did you watch the original Joe Millionaire? What are your opinions on the concept slash stunt of Joe Millionaire today? and how they've tried to adapt it to make it less bullshit and gaslighting. <laughs> Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Social Nannings Podcast. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also support me on Patreon, they'll be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Are we gonna get a cat fight? I think we need cat fights. I just think we need those every once in a while. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Dawn, Elliot, Evan, Feckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Jeffrey, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme Lord the Red, Michael, Michael, Jane, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tosh, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Endry.